Hello and welcome. In today's video, I am going to talk through step by step my choices and why I am making them on several crafts. This is going to hopefully provide a little bit more insight into how I craft items and what knowledge I am using so that you can find success in your own crafts. Now, these five crafts that I'm about to talk about are all things that I have done recently. Most of the items I crafted for this video have already sold. If it has sold, I will include a clip of the sale. If it hasn't sold, obviously, you'll just have to watch my stream if you want to see it sell. So to start off, this is a cluster jewel that I crafted purely for profit. I was not looking for anything specific. I was just looking for rarer modifiers. The reason I wanted a rarer modifier on this cluster jewel when I was alt-og regaling is any of the rarer modifiers will usually lead to a more sellable item. It's pretty easy to put anything cold tagged on a cold cluster jewel as there are a lot of especially prefixes that share the cold tag. If I hit one of the rarer prefixes such as sadist, corrosive elements, blanketed snow, cold to the core, inspired oppression, blast freeze, or storm rider, I would price check it and see, you know, what can I add to that with say cold augment or potentially other augments to increase the value of this, to make it something that is worth rolling. If something worth a few X comes up, I'm going to do it. If something worth 50 C comes up, I'm absolutely not going to do it. I ended up hitting Doriani's Lesson, which is a rare suffix, and I decided, you know what, I can probably force some cold prefixes off of this and get a sellable item. So I moved on to the next step. And that second step was remove non-cold, add cold. The reason for this is I needed a prefix. And well, the only prefixes that I could get that were notables were all cold tagged. There is a chance that we remove non-cold, add cold, could have added cold res. It could have removed the Doriani's lesson, so this was a gamble. However, it's a very inexpensive craft, and I could just go back to repeating step one if that happened. So I took the two and three chance to improve the item, the one in three chance to brick. I hit blanketed snow, which is pretty lucky because remember, that is one of those rare prefixes that I mentioned earlier that tends to have a low weighting and tends to be harder to roll. It's from this point that this item was now worth money and worth investing into. And so investing into it is exactly what I did. I bought an augment cold. The reason I bought augment cold was because I wanted to put a prefix on it. And the only prefixes available are again, those cold notables. So I added a cold notable, added a prefix, got something that synergized okay with the Blanketed Snow and Doriani's Lesson. I wouldn't say this was the best possible outcome that I could have hit, but it's certainly not bad. Blast Freeze helps proliferate your freezes, which causes Herald of Ice to be more effective. It does have increased cold damage. A lot of people would be interested in that. So I put it up for around five Exalted Orbs, and then I lowered the price a bit over time. I ended up selling it for roughly four and a half Exalted Orbs. This was a very simple craft. It cost me roughly one Exalt to do it, you can repeat similar results. You might not get a rare prefix like that, or you might prefer to alt aug regal into that rare prefix first, because if you do augment life, the only life suffixes on these clusters are life regen and Doriani's lesson. So you could actually force Doriani's lesson onto anything you want. The total cost for this was around one exalted orb, counting the base, the materials to roll the jewel, and the crafts. It sold for 4.5 exalts, meaning I made a 3.5 exalted orb profit off of the honor shard. Next, I'm going to talk about the Agony Cord, a staging device that is very similar to the one I'm using currently on my Ball Lightning Miner. I bought the base for around 50 chaos, and then I was rolling it with dense fossils. I want to try to hit maximum energy shield and percent maximum energy shield. I am not particularly concerned with the suffixes, as long as they are either removable or potentially useful. Ideally, I would like an open prefix or removable prefix, but if it hits armor, which is very common, that's fine. I rolled it with dense fossils. I hit what I wanted rather quickly this time, but from my experience, you will hit what you want within around 20 total fossils, as long as you're not being super picky. So now I have a ES-based Stygian. It's got the energy shield. It's got the increased energy shield. What do I want to do to finish it, pretty it up, and make it into a good item? First, I opted to remove cold. The reason I did this is the cold res is just too low to be a selling point, and it takes up a valuable suffix slot. This cost around 20 chaos orbs, and it was completely guaranteed there's no way for me to brick the item. I then crafted myself some nice res on it. So now it's got 80 res, and it's got ES. 
And I did Augment Caster. The only caster suffix on this belt is the increased spell damage during Flask Effect, which my Stygian has on my Ball Lightning Miner. Unfortunately, I didn't hit a good roll, so I did use one Add Remove Caster. The odds are pretty good in favor of rerolling to a Tier 2 or a Tier 1, and from my experience, 30% or higher sells a lot better than Tier 3. So that's what I did, and I hit it in 1. This was a very quick and fairly simple crafting process. I spent roughly 50 Chaos Orbs for the base. In my case, I did not spend a lot for fossils, but you can assume that you will spend an average of, depending on if you buy fossils in bulk, buy resonators in bulk, etc., roughly 20 fossils, or 25 to 50 Chaos Orbs. That brings the total cost to 100. I then used Remove Cold, which was 20, Augment Caster, which was 25, and Add Remove Caster, which was 15, for a grand total of around 160 Chaos Orbs or 1 Exalt. Optionally, if you want to make it easier to sell, you can spend an additional 80 Chaos Orbs to use a Tempering Catalyst. You don't need to do that. It definitely helps, but if you're trying to sell it on the lower end of a price range that I've estimated for this item, I wouldn't. If you're aiming for the higher end because you have a better belt, I definitely would. I estimate depending on exactly which other suffixes you get and if it has no armor roll or not, you're looking at conservatively around 5 exalts, or if you're really lucky, 20 plus should you hit that empty prefix and be able to craft lightning damage. But I don't use spells. This doesn't help me. This is all spell stuff. I just want to hit things. Well, I have a helmet for you then. I am going to combine Essence of Greed with garden crafting to easily create an eye level 85 elder helmet with good life and with nearby enemies take 9% increased physical damage. To start with, I get any elder helmet eye level 85 on ideally a strength base because most fizz melee builds or most pure fizz builds in general use armor. This cost me around 20 chaos orbs. I then spammed essence of greed. I was looking for something with only one open prefix and a resist suffix, and the last suffix being either open or easily removable, such as accuracy. Next, I need to resolve the fact that it has an open prefix, because when I do the augment fizz, I can't have an open prefix on my item, or it will just put fizz as a prefix and kind of waste the augment. So I block a suffix, I then augment life, got a nice juicy life roll on it now, I remove the crafted suffix, and augment physical, so... Now it has the minus nine. And finally, I remove the attack mod. It could have been sellable with this tier one accuracy. From my experience, accuracy helmets sell a lot slower. So I just wanted to slap some resists on it and sell it a little faster. The total cost for this was about 105 chaos orbs. I spent roughly 20C on the base, 30C on the essences of greed, 30C on the life augment, 15C on the fizz augment, and 10C on the remove attack. I currently have the helmet up for roughly six exalted orbs. It has not sold as of yet. Generally speaking, helmets can be worth between four and nine exalted orbs, depending on what they roll. One of the nice things about this craft is after you roll the essences of greed, there's very little RNG involved. It's all easily done and deterministic. On to the last two crafts, which are both a little bit more complex and significantly more expensive. First is the Titanium Spirit Shield that I rolled with Dense Fossils and then finished with the Garden. So to start with, as I was rolling with Dense Fossils, I was keeping an eye out for good ES or the potential to get good ES, i.e. high flat and percentile ES with any other prefix. Or I was looking for chance to block spell damage. Socketed Gems have reduced mana reserve and in some cases, possibly something like a higher tier spell crit or plus one to level of all spell skill gems of a specific type, be it chaos, fire, lightning, etc. These are all bases that will sell quite well when finished, and they all have a potential to be finished using the garden. In this case, I did not have the best base, but I also didn't have the worst base. I had a good starting point, I had a lot of potential ES, but it needed quite a bit of work and some extra crafts. So I needed to fix the suffixes, needed to get rid of the low tier mods. I do that with a remove cold and then a remove non-defense, add defense. The remove non-defense will give me my ES on block. I then augment with fire just because I wanted to have a res suffix. It didn't have to be augment fire. It could be augment cold. It could be augment lightning. It could be augment chaos. It could even be augment caster. It's up to you but I just picked something at random. I then re-rolled the fire, 
because it wasn't quite high enough, in my opinion, to get the shield sold. I've noticed that shields that have over 400 ES and 40% plus res were significantly more valuable than shields with 20 to 30. Now, in terms of his craft, step one does have a lot of RNG. I've spent upwards of one exalt in fossils to craft something like this a lot of the time. The later steps are more deterministic and therefore little to no RNG. There's a little bit when it comes to rolling a good resist roll to get 40 plus. From my experience, three or four rerolls is all it ever takes. What's the end result? Well, I spent around five and a half exalted orbs in total to craft this. That was probably a little cheaper than I'd spend on average. I'd say I'd probably spend six on average. And I sold the shield for nine exalted orbs. This means that, again, on average, I would probably be making a three exalt profit. In this case, because I got a little lucky, I made around a three and a half exalt profit. The profit margins for these shields are kind of all over the place. It can be much, much, much higher than what you saw here. You can sell shields like this with better rolls, with some of the things I mentioned in the beginning, for upwards of 20 exalts, especially if they hit high ES or good resistances. Finally, High Life Hunter Two-Tone Boots with Movement Speed and Tailwind. This is the most expensive item that I ended up making. If you're an ES build, you can use Sorcerer Boots in place of Two-Toned. To start with, get some eye level 86 hunter boots. I prefer to slim them myself as it is less expensive than just buying 86 two-toned hunter boots. Then I use Essence of Greed. Note, you might want to use Zeal or Woe if you are making the ES version. The point is to get a stat that you want on it and roll it until you get a second stat. In this case, I am putting High Life, 90 plus, with the Deafening Essence of Greed, and rolling it until I get High Movement Speed. 30 or 35 percent. After I do this, I need to make sure the suffixes are full. If you're just using them yourself, or if you are just selling for a small profit, you might not need great suffixes. It is very, very important that before the next step, your suffixes are full. Then do remove a non-critical modifier, add a critical modifier. If your suffixes are full, this must remove a suffix, thus you will not break the life or the movement speed. And this will also add Tailwind, because Tailwind is the only critical tagged hunter suffix. You now have Tailwind Boots with high move speed and high life, and ideally an additional mod or resists. If there's an open prefix, feel free to augment some life to increase the value. If you're using a crafted suffix and it didn't get removed, feel free to craft some resists or whatever else you might want. All in all, this is a fairly straightforward craft for how profitable it is, the reason it is as profitable as it was for me is because I also hit the poisons deal damage 10% faster. I found that most of these boots do tend to sell for more like 6 exalts. This pair sold for 12, again due to the poison mod, which was lucky on my part. I actually had a fair bit of luck while making this video, but keep in mind the more that you craft, the more you will have those a little bit lucky moments. So the total cost for me in this case, 2.5x of a base, around 60c for Essence of Greed, it can easily go over 100c here. It will vary. Sometimes I've hit it in 1, sometimes I've hit it in around 12. Remove non-crit, add crit was about 20c. Augment life was about 40. So around 3 to 3.5 exalts for the cost, and it sold for 12 exalts. This means that I made over 8 exalts in profit. Again, if we estimate more conservatively and assume that it costs around 3 to 4 to make and sells for 6, you should expect at least two exalts back when using this method. In closing, I hope you found this helpful. I tried to walk through this process, explain my reasoning and my thinking behind why I was doing what I was doing. If you're wondering, well, how did you know that this was the only caster mod? Or how did you know this was the only crit mod? The simple answer is I looked on PoEDB or on Craft of Exile, and I used that. It's very easy to check what tags are on mods on an item. If you're trying to remove them, you can just do that in-game by holding Alt with Advanced Mod Descriptions on. If you're trying to check what tags are not on an item, but could be, that's a little harder. You do still have to go to a third-party website. But realistically, PoE is a game that rewards effort. It is not a game for people to be lazy with. The more effort you put into your maps, the more effort you put into your character, the more effort you put into any aspect of the game, the more the game rewards you. The less effort you put in, the less it rewards you. So personally, I do not have a problem with having to do a little research to do some endgame crafting. Thank you for watching. If you've enjoyed, and if there are other crafts you would like to see, then please 
let me know in the comments below. Stay safe, Exiles.